He also, though, went three for five, drove in three runs, and tied for the big lead RBI lead. No, the rub on the Cubs is a starting rotation where only Kerry Wood had thrown six innings in the last week. Mark Grace saying, quote, the bullpen's been out there a lot, and it's starting to show. Wood trying to play the role of stopper. Sammy Sosa facing Brett Tomko, who had struck him out in his all of his previous four appearances, but not this time. Number 52 goes 434 feet. Yeah, it was high, not low. Cubs go up four to one. Royal or Wood just abusing the Reds all day long. Meanwhile, and Sammy enjoys it. Reggie Sanders, the leadoff man for the Reds, strikes out on the fastball there. He fanned three times. Barry Larkin, second in the order on the high, hard one. He did get one of the three Reds hits off Woods. Third in the lineup, Sean Casey, struck out twice by Wood. That brings up cleanup man Dimitri Young, who also strikes out on the high, hard one. He fanned once in the game. Eddie Tobinsy, the next victim, he goes down twice on the day. Brett Boone, no success here. Wood got him all three times he saw him. Roberto Pettigine, the seventh hitter, swinging. The eighth hitter in the lineup, Aaron Boone. On a full count pitch, Wood gets him with the breaking ball. Boone did homer off him in the second inning. We give him credit for that. The only red in the starting lineup not to strike out was Tomko. And he only came up once. Kerry Wood with 16 strikeouts in eight innings. He gives up just three hits and three walks. The Cubs win at 9-2. to two. Wood now with 223 strikeouts. Just Hundley's in just a moment. Top of the first, former Dodger Lenny Harris leading off the game against former Dodger Oral Hershiser and takes him halfway across the bay. His third of the season puts the Mets up. Bottom of the first, another former Dodger, Hideo Nomo, on the hill for the Mets. Gets Barry Bonds. Oh, looking on the splitter. Two strikeouts in the first for Nomo, and he would be on to even bigger things. Top of the third, John Olerud sends it down the third baseline. Bill Miller, the stop and the throw. Bottom of the fourth, Giants down 2 nothing. Bonds looking for redemption, but Nomo gets him again with the off-speed pitch. Seven strikeouts through four. Bottom of the fifth, Brian Johnson at the plate with the Giants down 4-1. to one. Hits it down to Olerud, who makes the great play to save the inning. Olerud only went one for five, dropping his average to 343, but doing it with the leather. Bottom of the seventh, Bonds taking his cuts again. Strikes out again. Nomo with nine strikeouts through seven. He finished with 10. The Mets win 4-1. to one. But we need to share it with everyone else. First inning, first batter. Darren Oliver facing John Cangelosi. Delino DeShields going to make a great diving stop and throw to first. Problem, DeShields injured, strained his left shoulder on the play, would have to leave the game. Bottom four, still scoreless. There's Little Mac, Matthew McGuire, hoping Dad can take Kurt Ojula out of the yard. But Ojula gets him looking. 0 for 7, 3K's career against Ojula. Bottom eight, one nothing cards. As the ball hit the deep center. Home run number 54, where are you? Oh, my goodness. That is unbelievable. That's over 500 feet. A blast to straightaway center measured at 509 feet. A majestic 54th for McGuire. <laughs> Thank goodness it hit in this area where the shrubs are or down there because look at the adults beating each other up for it. McGuire the curtain call and rightfully so. It was 6 nothing going to the ninth and all of a sudden Derek Lee, Cliff Floyd, Kevin Ory back to back to back. Solo homer 6-3 Marlins down three. Three hitters later a couple on. Jeff Brantley comes in to face Mark Kotze. After Frascator sent La Russa to the bullpen and rolling his eyes you had a couple on and Kotze pinch hitting against Brantley and he takes him deep to right this McGuire thing is contagious a three-run blast four homers in the ninth that's Marlin history La Russa can't believe a six nothing lead is gone it's six six to the top of the tenth two on Leland was tossed from this game the hitter after McGuire was hit and Leland came out to argue so he wasn't around to see Randy Nor double off Juan Acevedo, Floyd scores the game winner, and the Marlins win by the count of 7-6. to six. This has been such a disappointing season for the Cardinals. 275 in a row at the Jake. There's Junior against Dave Burba. He sends one to center field. A-Rod tagging up from second. Kenny Lofton. Got him. Great throw at third. Bottom five, still 2-1. Manny Ramirez. Manny Ramirez has absolutely torched Seattle pitching this year. 
Manny has 32 homers this year, seven, seven of them against Seattle. That's like more than one-fifth. <laughs> Still 3-2, Cecil on deck. <laughs> Lofton on second, Facero walks Ramirez. Next pitch to Fielder, wild pitch. Lofton coming from second, comes all the way around, shades of the ALCS in 95. 4-2 Indians, 5-3 Indians, top nine, runner on the grounder. Russ Davis tries to avoid the tag. He is ruled out, so they say double play. They say Davis came out of the baseline. Luke Pinella says, come on, this season has been the season from you know what. You're going to call a little itsy-bitsy call like that on me. You've got to be kidding me, Larry Barnett. He disagrees. Larry Barnett, very casually, without making a lot of fanfare, just kind of gave one of those, like, you're pointing out something across the street. Threw him out. Just said, Lou, you're out of here. That's done, okay? Lou was trying to say, look, he stayed on the way and never got tagged. Mm. Should be safe at second, should not be a double play. Well, Lou complained, and then finally realized, I got thrown out. I was being calm. I got thrown out. Larry Barnett, you got to be kidding me. And then Lou Pinella, understanding that NFL rosters have been cut down to 60, understanding that there's a chance for some kicking spots to open up after a last four weekend, <laughs> Lou let go on Larry Barnett. He lost the lid and then blew up. There you go. I'm going to show you plays kicking. Parcells, I can kick it better than John Hall. Better than Brett Conway. I can kick it. I thought in the newsroom, Junior even had a laugh. He tried to hide it, but we caught him. I, I had a laugh. In the newsroom, I honestly, I bet a milkshake that he would take second base and throw it. We've seen Lou do that. He did not do that, but he kicked the hat. He kicked. He has not kicked the habit of kicking the hat. <laughs> We feel your pain. And then after he threw the hat in the stands, it got thrown back at him. Even Barnett had to chuckle at that. A uh, Wrigley Field-type reaction to the Pinella hat coming. It, it's been that kind of year for Lou, and we, and we feel bad for them. But can't pitch again tonight. 18 strikeouts last night. Rose up 1-0. Sutton at third. Offerman at second. Dean Palmer against Chris Carpenter. Two outs. Ball out. Dean Palmer, a 30-home run year. 4 nothing Royals. We get a little bit back from last night, but tough night for the Jays. Check out Carlos Delgado trying to get to the foul ball. Uh, can't get to the foul ball. Share the love. How you doing? Good to see you. You come to Jays games often? Good. Uh, bottom nine, Casey up 7-2. Jose Canseco off of Tim Belcher. Johnny Damon to the wall, and he makes the catch. Why did I get excited? <laughs> I got faked out, too. Belcher pitched his first complete game since... Up of the six, saves with a 4-1 lead, but the bases are juiced against Miguel Tejada. Loops one in the left field, and the fan makes the play, and that'll be a ground rule double. And thanks for helping out the ball club. 4-3, Saber Hagen's out of there. Then Eckersley came in, and that's going to be a pass ball. 29th of the season for the Red Sox. That leads the bigs. We're tied at four. Top six, or rather bottom six, Darren Bragg at the plate. Darren Bragg. Short. Uh, why are you going to slide into first? Let's all run across the bag anyway. <laughs> Little short. Bottom eight, we're tied at four. Darren Lewis, 51 RBIs and a 407 career average with the bases juiced. Bases are juiced, or else we wouldn't have shown that little bit of information. And there is Darren Lewis coming through again, through the drawn in infield. Darren Buford and Donnie Sadler would score. The Red Sox go on to win it by a count of seven to four. Second straight night that Lewis has delivered the gamer. He homered leading off the seventh and re-aggravated a rib injury sustained in batting practice. Bottom three, one nothing Braves. Walt Weiss, who'd made an error earlier in the inning, makes a great stop on Billy Spires play and gets his man at second. Top four, one nothing Braves. Ryan Kluss goes on first, and he will be able to trot home at a leisurely pace. Javi Lopez, his third homer in the last three games, 3 nothing Braves. Bottom six, Astros down 5-1. Derek Bell is on first. Jeff Bagwell, Michael Tucker, Michael Tucker, no. Andrew Jones will pick it up. Bell had to hold up to wait to see if Tucker was going to catch it, and he had to stay on second base. So a couple of batters later, with Carl Everett now up. Everett smokes one to center field. Andrew's right there, and Bell was snoozing. Double off second base. Bottom of the ninth. Moises Alou on second. The Astros were down five. Tony Eusebio. The plate, he has a little duck snort. Here comes Andrew. Andrew getting it done. The Braves win it by a count of 6-2. to two. Man, that kid is so, so good in center field. The Braves win it, getting a split of their series with the Astros. And the same still with Caminiti, but in the top of the first, it was Steve Finley. It's not the size of the stick. It's all about finding the sweet spot. And Finley did for the 11th time. one nothing Padres. And that would be plenty for Joey Hamilton. He got Bobby Abreu. And then he got Scott Rowland. I'm predicting now. 
<laughs> Ham <laughs> Hamilton allows just five hits over seven. The Padres win it by a count of 2 nothing. Trevor Hoffman pitched the ninth. He got his 43rd save. That's one short of the team record set by Mark Davis. His brother Wilton involved on this play. Eric Young bunts. Brad Fulmer fields. Look out. Young and Guerrero collide. Young, a former Rutgers football player, was called out, though, by home plate ump Joe West for running inside the baseline. Both players stayed in the game. And in this game, top of the ninth, two outs. 3-2 Dodger. Jeff Shaw facing Ryan McGuire. And Jeff Shaw, it's his eighth blown save of the season. Blew it for Chan Ho Park. Terry Jones scores from second. We're tied at three. But in the bottom of the ninth, still 3-3. Eric Young at the plate. Here's Gary Thorne. That one, he drills to right field. Back for it. At the wall. In the end of a long day for Mr. Thorne, who was in San Francisco earlier in the day calling the Mets-Giants game. 4-3 is your final. Chan Ho Park fell just two outs short of his first complete game of the season. Night double dip. Jeff Juden with his blonde hair getting Scott Brocious and stranding a runner at second. Bottom four. Brocious again. Another runner left on second. Bottom five, or top five, I should say. Angels down 2-1, and that's Reggie Williams. He's bounced around 11 years as a pro. 32 big league at bats coming into this game. And his first big league home run makes it 3-2. Angels. Top six, more trouble for Bradley. Runner on second, and Tim Salmon will smoke one into the gap. Darren Erstadt will come around to score on the double. Angels got three in the inning and knocked Bradley out of there. Bottom of the seventh now, Yankees down 6-2. Brocious sit on it again. Eight Ks on the game for Juden. Another runner left on first. Later in the seventh, Yankees had cut it to 6-4. Bernie Williams drills one, but Erstadt there to knock it down and beat his man to the bag. Bernie was 0 for 4. Bottom nine, still 6-4. Troy Percival gets Brocious for the fourth time in the game. Three batters later, Derek Jeter, and that'll do it. Troy Percival has allowed one hit against the last 33 Yankees he's faced, and the Angels go on to win it by a count of 6-4. to four. That to the mound, top of the third, two outs, no score. Jim Edmonds against Wells, and he got every little bit of it. He's a lumberjack, and he's okay. Number 19, first of his career at Yankee Stadium. The Angels have come back in all of their previous wins against New York. They're ahead this time. This is Homer Bush. He is the fourth person named Homer in Major League Baseball history to hit a homer. There have been 10 guys named Homer. More on that shortly. Sparks knuckleball would fly away from Phil Nevin. Paul O'Neill coming home. Fielding Colbert calls him safe. It's worth another peek. O'Neill with a nifty slide, getting his hand in there. Good call, it looks like. 5-1 Yankees. Bottom of the seventh, Angels, and cut it to 5-3. Yankees with men on the corners. Mike Fetters fakes it, throw to third, and that play almost worked this time. He panicked. Scott Brocious would come in on the bad throw at 6-3 Yankees. Bottom of the ninth now, the game had been tied up 6-6 when Anaheim got a run to tie it in the ninth. And Jorge Posada was on third when Derek Jeter knocks him in, and the Yankee losing streak is over. Joe Torre's job is safe. I don't know what they're going to talk about on the talk shows in New York tomorrow. Sox bottom second. Juan Guzman bounces one up there. Lenny Webster gets Mike Caruso hung up between first and second. Palmero will come back this way and now somebody's coming home. Say, Ray Durham sneaks in there. It's 4-1. White Sox. Still in the bottom of the second. It's the big hurt. Oh, that's way back, Wimpy. And you can put it on the board. Yes. yes. Number 25 on the year for the Big Hurt. White Sox up 6-1. They got six in the second. Solid defense by the White Sox as well. Eric Davis against James Baldwin and Ventura making the terrific play at third to get ED at first. White Sox cruise in to win it by a count of 12-5. Baltimore has now lost five out of six. Juan Guzman, Rangers and the Tigers. Pick this one up at the bottom of the first one, nothing Detroit. And you see Rusty Greer knocking in Tom Goodwin to tie it up at one. Next man is Juan Gonzalez. He rips one to left center. Mark McLemore and Greer would come in to score. Gonzalez passes Sosa for the RBI, lead 131 at that point. Bottom two, Rangers up 5-1. Greer at the plate. Greer drives one into left center. Over the head of Luis Gonzalez. He almost had that thing, but banged into the wall. Greer three hits in his first three at bats. And guess who again? This time it's a new pitcher, Frank Castillo. I don't think Juan cares who the pitcher is. Rips one into left field, second double of the game. Greer would come in, 6-1 Rangers. Gonzalez, four RBIs, going three for four. Steinbach had himself a nice night. This one's going to drop right in, and Randy Wynn loses over his head. Matt Lawton, Alex Ochoa would score. Steinbach 
with Motor in there with a triple. He was just a home run short of the cycle on the evening. Later still in the second, 3-0 Twins. Paul Molitor hits one right off his cuticles. Paul Sorrento in front of Miguel Cairo making a grab. Five innings pitch, giving up two runs. Bob Tewksbury, his first start after coming off the DL, and it might have been his last one as a twin. More on that in just a second. Went five, gave up just two runs. Top of the ninth, it's 5-3, and Ron Coomer had one drop in there. Bubba Trammell and Cairo crashed at a racing deal. Two runs come in to score, and Larry Rothschild not happy about that. Facing Willie Banks with a man on, now a man home. That man is Tony Womack, scoring easily in the bob. That puts the Pirates up 4-3, to three, and they go on to win by that score. 68 on the day. Larry Walker pinch hitting, bottom nine, the MVP at 336 hitter, chilling just a little bit too hard. Garner gets his 500th career win. Brewers win at 6-5.